So now we're going to look at the terminology for working with sample distributions. So the first thing is when we go to find the average from a sample distribution, we use the subscript x bar so that people know it's not just any old average. It's an average of a group of averages, but as we've discussed, we found out it's identically equal to that population average. So specifically, mu sub x bar is called the mean of all sample means, all x bars. So we're finding an average of a bunch of averages. And when we want to find the standard deviation from a set of data, we use the subscript to indicate that. And our formula turns out it's not just the population standard deviation, it's the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And this is called the standard deviation of all sample means, so all x bars. So we have a bunch of x bars and we're going to find the standard deviation of those x bars. And so just to put that into words, we're treating all of the x bars, all of the averages, like a data set. Like that is our population, those 16 numbers in the pre previous example. And when you talk about the standard deviation of a sample distribution, it can also be referred to as the standard error of the mean, but I don't know how often we'll see that in this class. Um, so in the example we had just did, we had 16 numbers that gave us an average of 5 and a population standard deviation of 2.236 because it was all 16 numbers. Then when we took a sample of size 2, according to everything we just found, the average of those 16 numbers is going to be equal to the population average. So it's going to be equal to 5, which is why we have the 5 here. But the standard deviation of those 16 numbers is really to take the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. This is the one to watch out for. We divided by 2 because the sample size was 2. There were 16 numbers in our list. And if you were finding a standard deviation of a population, you would be dividing by the square root of the sample size, all 16 for that. But in this case, we're dividing by sample size, too. And as you can see in your notes, or if you remember, the number that we had just gotten was the 1.581. That basically, when we had taken... Uh, pause. Sorry about that. So when we had... Um, found the 1.581. We had taken every single X bar, all 16 of them, and found the standard deviation formula by hand. But that's the exact same answer we got when we just divided two existing numbers, which is much faster. So since even though the mean equals the population mean, but the standard deviation of a sample distribution is not exactly equal to the standard deviation of the population, we're going to have to change our z-scores a little bit. So you're familiar already with the z-score from one data item. So if you just have one data item, which is what we've done, we take x minus mu divided by sigma. So our individual score divided, sorry, minus the mean over the standard deviation. But now, when we're working with a sampling distribution, we're actually going to be converting an average from a set of numbers. So we'll do examples in a moment, but we're looking at, we want to find how many standard deviations away the group average is from the mean. So we start with what looks at first maybe like the original formula. We're converting mu, the mean, to a sampling mean, and we need to use sigma the population for a sampling distribution, sorry. But the other big thing to notice right here is this first part of the z-score formula. If you're only working with one item, you just insert x into the formula. But if you're finding the z-score for an average, you're going to put an average into that first spot. Number-wise, it might be hard to tell where it came from, but that's what the formula looks like. And then since we know what mu sub x bar and sigma sub x bar equal, let's go ahead and convert those over. And this is what we're going to use for our z-score formula for a sample 
mean of data.